If you've been scrolling on YouTube for a while, by chance you've probably stumbled upon an iceberg image. If not, then let me give you a little background knowledge for what it is about. So an iceberg image is basically, from the top, it's what people mainly know, and what is basically surface level stuff, while as it goes down, it becomes much more obscure in its content, and it's what a lot of people don't really know. So I decided today to make a Disney iceberg image video in which this is a second video in an iceberg series I want to start on my channel in which my first video was the Attack on Titan iceberg so if you're a fan of Attack on Titan I recommend go check it out if you want to um, first things first I want to point out something before we get started with this video um, there are gonna be topics such as racism talked about in this video because we will be going back in time to Disney's earlier days so I want to stress that this is for educational purposes only. I will only be talking about them for that purpose. It is not to mock or discriminate anybody. It is just to bring up what happened in the past with Disney and certain stuff like that. Credits to XZ1224 on Reddit who posted this under the r slash iceberg charts on Reddit. So I'm giving credit for this iceberg image. To that redditor and without further ado let's get started now with the video so i'll be going through this particular layer a bit more quickly because it's kind of short and what it has to talk about so a hidden Mickey is basically a representation of Mickey Mouse that has been inserted discreetly into the design of a ride, attraction, or other location in a Disney theme park, Disney properties, animated film, feature length movie, TV series, or other Disney product. There is approximately a thousand hidden Mickeys that have been recorded throughout, I believe, Walt Disney World and Disneyland. The Walt Disney Company has never compiled a complete list of all the quote-unquote known or quote-unquote deliberate Mickeys whether created by an engineer or a Disney cast member. So there is no way to confirm or disprove any reported Mickey's sightings. The green stuff. Now, you may have assumed that the green stuff meant some sort of drug thing that went on in Disney. However, that is not the case. The green stuff is actually called Go Away Green, and it's a specific shade Disney uses to make less magical structures and details blend in with the landscaping. They slather it on everything they want their customers to overlook, utility buildings, employee entryways, trash cans, and even large business buildings. It's somewhat of their camouflage to hide certain things that are being built. Train station Morse code. Now this is in reference to a Morse code speech from Walt Disney on opening day on July 17th, 1955. Now it can be found on the second stop on the Disney Railroad in Disneyland and is home to the Telegraph Cable Office where a, par a paraphrased portion of Walt Disney's opening day speech from July 17, 1955 can be heard in Morse code. The telegraph message is just over a minute long and decoded, it says, to all who come to Disneyland, welcome. Make-A-Wish events. Now, Make-A-Wish is basically a program that Disney has had for more than 40 years in which they have been providing magic to wish kids and their families when they need it the most. In fact, Disneyland was part of the first wish ever granted by Make-A-Wish since 1980 and Disney has helped Make-A-Wish grant more than 140,000 wishes around the world. Pluto interacts with service dogs. Now this is a video from 2018 in which a service dog met Pluto at a Disney World theme park. A friendly service dog named Atlas got to do just that when he had the opportunity to meet classic Disney canine Pluto at Disney World's Epcot Park last weekend. Indiana Jones Rope. Now, supposedly, if you find yourself outside of the show of the Indiana Jones Epic Stunt Spectacular, make sure you look for the well. There will be a sign on the well that reads, Warning, do not pull rope. If you decide to pull the rope, you'll hear that a man is stuck at the bottom of the well. Jungle Cruise Maps. Now, this is a map from the world-famous Jungle Cruise that has been taking Disneyland Park guests deep into the heart of darkness for 60 years. In all this time, you may have wondered, how exactly does one find his way from the hippo pool to the one, the only, backside of water? Good news, adventurers. The Jungle Cruise skippers have sent the Disney Parks blog the following map, direct from the classic Disneyland Park attraction. Mark Twain Wheelhouse. Now, this is a riverboat at Disneyland in which guests can ride on it and basically go through different rivers along Disneyland. Thank you. 
Oswald the Lucky Rabbit came first. Now, Oswald the Lucky Rabbit was the original Mickey Mouse, in which he was created in 1927 by Walt Disney and UB Works for Universal Pictures. He starred in several animated short films released to theaters from 1927 to 1938. 27 animated Oswald shorts were produced at the Walt Disney Studio. However, due to losing the rights to the character in a contract dispute with Universal Studios, Universal continued to produce Oswald cartoons while Disney and it works went on to create Mickey Mouse. Andy's Coming. Now, Andy's Coming was a trend stemming in 2016-2017 in which people would pretend to be the toys from Toy Story in which whenever they said Andy's Coming, they would flop to the side and not move. And it stemmed from this particular clip in Toy Story. Andy's coming, everybody! Back to your place and hurry! Manhole Covers. Now, this is the newest addition to Epcot in which you'll have to keep your eyes to the ground. New manhole covers have arrived at the park featuring reimagined park logo and five ringed icon on a background resembling the tiles on spaceship earth mad tea party cups have different spreads now this one was kind of hard to find in a way because when searching it up it mainly took me to the uh, amusement park ride which was located at magic kingdom which is Ma the mad tea party which is a spinning teacup ride at five of six disneyland style theme parks around the world the ride theme is inspired by the unbirthday party scene in Walt Disney's Alice in Wonderland and plays a carousel version of the film's unbirthday song. It was one of the opening day attractions operating at Disneyland on July 17, 1955. Utilitors. Now, this is in reference to, in some Disney theme parks, the utility system is a system of some of the world's largest utility tunnels, mainly for Walt Disney World's Magic Kingdom in Florida. The Utilitors, short for Utility Corridors, are part of Disney's backstage area in which cast members will use those underground tunnels in order to get to certain parts of the park without being in a part that they're not supposed to be in. Tomorrowland plants are edible. Now, about 80% of the Tomorrowland plants in the park are edible. Vegetables, herbs, and fruit trees grow all over Tomorrowland. At one point, all of the plants in Tomorrowland were edible and were an example of food source for the future. Now, Disneyland guides say about 80% of plants in Tomorrowland are edible and harvestable. Exclusive buttons. Now, this is possibly in reference to the pin trading and the button trading that Disney used to have. I don't know if they still do it, but they used to, that used to be very big for the entire company back in the 90s. World War II shorts. Now, this is in reference to Walt Disney's World War II propaganda production that happened between 1941 and 1945 during World War II. Walt Disney was involved in the production of propaganda films for the U.S. government. The widespread familiarity of Disney's productions benefited the U.S. government in producing pro-American war propaganda in an effort to increase support for the war. Old Snow White Ride. Now, this is in reference to the old ride, which was titled Snow White's Scary Adventures, that came to a close on May 31st, 2012, to be physically replaced by the Princess Fairytale Hall in Disney World. However, its spirit still lives on in the Seven Dwarfs Mine Train, which still commands the largest lines in the parks today. What Made the Red Man Red? Now, this is a song from the 1953 Disney animated film Peter Pan, with music by Sammy Fain and the lyrics by Sammy Kahn, in which the natives tell their story through a stereotypical dance while singing. Some modern audiences consider it racist and offensive due to its exaggerated stereotypes. Although a similar depiction was displayed within J.M. Barry's original play, later adaptations have reimagined the natives, while the Disney version, and this song in particular, were said to have, quote-unquote, doubled down on racial stereotypes. It has been compared to the song Savages from the 1995 Disney film Pocahontas, which contains negative lyrics regarding Native Americans, in contrast with the What Makes the Red Man Red. However, the offensive lyrics in Savages were written purposefully as they were sung by the villains of the movie in order to illustrate the message that racism is wrong. What made the red man red? River Country. Now, Disney's River Country was the first water park at Walt Disney World. Located along the shores of Bay Lake and near Disney's Fort Wilderness Resort and Campground, the park was themed as a rustic, old-fashioned swimming hole. It opened on June 20th, 1976 and closed indefinitely on November 2nd, 2001, with the Walt Disney Company later announcing on January 20th, 
2005 that the park would remain closed permanently. However, a new hotel reflections a Disney Lakeside Lodge will be built at the former site of Disney's River County starting in 2019 and is set to open in 2022. Band Tarzan Toy. Now this toy I'm showing you was the rad repeating Tarzan action figure doll that was put on shelves back in 1999 and was recalled due to the toy making an inappropriate gesture with his hand which is controlled in the back of the doll. SEX and the Lion King. Now this was making its rounds a couple of years ago in which a lot of people had noticed that when the particles fly after Simba leans over the edge, the particle seems to be spelling out the word sex. However, a lot of people have also came up with the theory that it's actually spelling the words SFX in reference to the sound effects people. However, neither one has been confirmed by Disney. Goofy shorts were meant for adults. Now, I really couldn't find a law on this, but here's my guess on what I believe it has to do with it. So, in the 1950s, Goofy was portrayed as a family man, and in a lot of the comics, they have him basically doing everyday adult things such as working and certain things like that. And it could have been made for adults to kind of feel, in a way, like a replica of what they're doing is being mimicked into cartoons. The original Little Mermaid VHS box cover. Now the cover which I'm showing you right now comes from 1989 in which the Little Mermaid's box cover shows an inappropriate symbol on there which follows with the Lion King in the subliminal message part that was making its way around the internet a couple of years prior. The unfortunate mistake was on the cover for about a year when in 1990 an employee at a grocery store chain pulled the videos from their shelves because a customer complained about the inappropriate castle spire. The customer contacted Disney about the issue and the cover art was changed. WJAX reported that the Little Mermaid artwork cover that was first released could be worth up to $3,200. Haunted Mansion Suicide. Now, I really didn't find anything on this if somebody possibly took their own life in the Haunted Mansion ride at Disney World. However, I did find this theory on Reddit titled The Haunted Mansion Suicide Theory and by in the r slash Disney World Reddit forum, which I'll read to you right now. Since it's Halloween, I thought I'd submit a theory I overheard while in line at the Haunted Mansion. Simply stated, you die in the ride. You start off the ride going in through the front door and stretch into the stretching room. The ghost host says some stuff and then comes to his line about how there's no windows or door and you have to find a way to get out. Then he shows you how he quote unquote got out, cuts to black, lightning, corpse hanging from the rafters, doors open into the mansion itself and you continue on the tour of the mansion. The whole tour in the house, the ghosts are trying to scare you or otherwise creep you out. Further, ever notice how the ghost host is almost pitching you to become the thousands happy hunt? Anyways, you make your way through the house, halls, stairways, and finally the attic. Here in the attic, before reaching the wall, you turn around and go, or fall, backwards at a fairly sharp angle. Why would you take a sudden backwards movement like that? It's jumping backwards out of a window to your death. The ghost you, you see flying up is your transportation into the ghost world. Finally, you're greeted with a party in the graveyard where all the ghosts are happy to appear before you in close proximity, unlike in the ballroom scene. As the ride ends, you exit not the front door, but the crypt. Spreading ashes. Now, it's kind of no surprise to a lot of people in which this has happened. If you don't know, then let me give you a bit more into detail on what this is. So, no code is kept more under wraps than at Walt Disney World and then a call for H-E-P-A cleanup. It means that once again, a park guest has scattered the cremated remains of a loved one. Disney employees want you to stop scattering the ashes of your beloved dead family members at its theme parks. Quote unquote, this type of behavior is strictly prohibited and unlawful. A Disney spokesperson told the Wall Street Dur Journal, quote unquote, guests who attempt to do so will be scored off the property. The most famous scenario of this case was when a woman spread the dead ashes of her son in a Pirates of the Caribbean ride, in which supposedly now the son haunts the ride in Pirates of the Caribbean, in which he could be heard either laughing or crying. Black stereotypes. Now, in general, Disney has had a long history of stereotyping different races into their comics back in the 40s and 50s. Now on Disney+, Plus, there is now a warning label in any racist or stereotypical content that happened in the past. 
Many people have long said certain Disney classics like Peter Pan, Dumbo, and the Aristocrats contain racist stereotypes and overtones. Disney agrees. Viewers will now encounter a warning on Disney Plus when streaming those and other titles containing racist material. We can't change the past, but we can acknowledge it, learn from it, and move forward together. Disney said on its website detailing the new advisory to create a tomorrow that can only be be dreamed of. Song of the South. Now, on the topic of racial stereotypes in Disney's past, this particular movie was banned due to its controversial outlook on the topic of segregation and slavery. Some critics have described the film's portrayal of African Americans as racist and offensive, maintaining that black, vulgar, and other qualities are stereotypes. Because of this controversy, Disney has not released Song of the South on any home video format in the United States. Real Bones on the Pirates of the Caribbean ride Now, real human skeletal remains were once used in the Pirates of the Caribbean ride provided by the UCLA Medical School. The skeletal remains have since been returned for various reasons, but to this day, people insist that there is one remaining human skull seen during Disneyland's attraction, which is supposedly the one on top of the treasure chest. The Rescuer's Topless Woman. Now, in the photo I'm showing you right now, just above it in the windowsill, there is a photo of a topless woman that was put into the movie. Now, supposedly there are two topless woman frames that had been present in the film ever since its original theatrical release in 1977. A fact apparently confirmed by Disney, whose spokesperson said that the tampering was quote-unquote done more than 20 years ago. Although Disney claimed that they were not included in the 1992 home video release because that version was made from quote-unquote a different print. Disney also maintained that the images were not placed in the film by any of their animators but instead inserted during the post-production process. The company decided to recall 3.4 million copies of the video to quote-unquote Keep our promise to families that we can trust and rely on Disney brand to provide the finest in family entertainment. Who Framed Roger Rabbit Controversy Now, like I said with a lot of the other ones, a lot of people were aware of this controversy due to it making its rounds around the internet. So, with the film's later disc release, Variety first reported in March 1994 that observers uncovered several scenes of subliminal antics from the animators that featured brief nudity of the character Jessica Rabbit. Nara Dreamland Now, Nara Dreamland, or simply Dreamland, was a theme park in Nara, Japan, heavily inspired by Disneyland in California. It was in continuous operation for 45 years from 1961 until closing permanently in 2006 as a result of failing attendance. The park was left abandoned until it was demolished between October 2016 and December 2017. Sexism. Now, this can actually contribute into two factors from the past and somewhat the modern present. Now, back in the 30s, Walt Disney believed that women did not contribute any of the imaginative or creative processes in animating any type of media, in which a famous example of this is the letter he wrote to Mary Ford, in which the letter states, Dear Miss Ford, your letter of recent date has been received in the inking and painting department for reply. Women do not do any of the creative work in connection with preparing for the cartoons for the screen, as that work is performed entirely by young men. For this reason, girls are not considered for the training school. The only work open to women consists of tracing the characters on clear celluloid sheets with Indian ink and filling in the tracings on the reverse slide with print according to the directions. Now, the modern day sexism is actually seen in their movies, such as The Little Mermaid, in which it suggests women have to sacrifice who they are to be happy, in which Ariel gives up her voice in order to meet and then marry Prince Eric. Discovery Island. Now, Discovery Island is the banned island in Disney World that guests would have to go by boat to get over there. It basically had plants, animals, different exotic things like that. Although Disney never officially stated its reasons for closing the park, poor attendance and high maintenance costs combined with the newer and bigger Disney's Animal Kingdom being open a year before are most likely the causes. Since its closing, the island has sought largely abandoned with no signs of development. Although it might be tempting to visit the abandoned island for yourself, as a few bloggers, vloggers, and photographers have done in the recent past, remember that Discovery Island is not open to the public and you should not attempt to visit it. 
Those who have trespassed on the Disney's property have been banned in every single Disney World location. Kimba the White Lion. Now, this was a controversy surrounding The Lion King in which, when The Lion King was released in 1994, a controversy erupted over alleged appropriation of the 1960s anime series Kimba the White Lion. Created by Japan's god of manga, Osamu Tezuka. I'm sorry if I butchered that. 25 years later, fans of Tezuka say that Disney still has some explaining to do. Shows edited for 9-11. Now, after the attacks of 9-11, different shows and movies changed certain scenes to keep from bringing up traumatic experiences. The most famous example of this case was the original Spider-Man movie in which a helicopter was seen in between the two twin towers. After 9-11, Disney wanted up changing some of its shows and movies, with Lilo and Stitch being changed for its theatrical release. Cole Black and the Seven Dwarves Now, this actually was not made by Disney, it was distributed under Warner Brothers. However, this was a parody about the Disney movie Snow White. The film is an all-black parody of the Brothers Grimm fairy tale Snow White. Known to its audience from the popular 1937 Walt Disney animated feature Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. The stylistic portrayal of the characters is an example of quote-unquote darky iconography, I think I pronounced that wrong, which was widely accepted in American society at the time. As such, it is one of the most controversial cartoons in the classic Warner Brothers library. Being one of the censored 11, the cartoon has been rarely seen on television and has never been officially released on home video. Lost Shorts. Now, since Disney had started back in like the 30s, 40s, and 50s, it's quite obvious that over time, shorts are going to wind up becoming lost or obscure in its content. So, one particular lost media content around Disney is possibly Laughlets. Now, Laughlets is very well known in the lost media circuit for being a couple of shorts that Walt Disney produced back in the 30s or 40s and they are very very hard to find because very very little is known about them. The Mickey and Minnie Mouse sex tape. Now there's a lot of controversy surrounding this one and a lot of questioning because some have questioned if this is even authentic or if this is just a theory that's going around the internet. Now how this story goes is around the 40s or 50s for Walt's birthday a couple of animators decided to make a comic for him in which the comic was now called the Mickey and Minnie Mouse sex tape. So after showing it to Walt and a couple of workers on his birthday, Walt praised it and asked for the two animators responsible. And once the two animators responsible came forth and said it was them, he fired them on the spot. And supposedly since then, he had ordered for all copies to be burned in order to keep Disney's image. Now, the proof for this comes from an interview in the 90s when an animator who was supposedly present at the time brought this up. But after so much time has passed and possibly those animators are more than likely dead already, it's highly likely that we're not going to be able to see this short be released, especially since Disney would like to keep something like this under wraps. Alien Encounter was going to be based off of real aliens. Now, this is actually somewhat true due to the fact that this was Disney's UFO documentary in which Disney and Disney CEO at the time had produced this and it actually aired on five stations. However, this was actually considered a piece of obscure media due to how many people possibly saw it. It actually had a ride that was based off of it but shut down six months after opening. Now, I believe you can find this video online. I'm not sure, however, the entire con controversy around this video was that when it came to extraterrestrials or anything coming to Earth, this documentary claimed it as fact. So, yeah, like I said, you can find this documentary online and watch it for yourself. Disney created furries. Now, I think this is a theory. I don't know if it's a fact or not, but I think this is a theory stemming from the character costumes of Minnie, Mickey, Pluto, all of them and how it possibly kind of correlates with the furry community. Javier Cruz. Now, some people may have heard this story since it was circulating around the internet a couple of years ago, but if you haven't, let me tell you. So, back in 2004, a float ran over and killed a costume Disney worker during a Magic Kingdom parade, which was Javier Cruz. He was a father of two and an eight-year Disney veteran who was playing Pluto in the Daily Afternoon Parade. 
Marcelo Torres. Now, this happened in 2003 in which Marcelo Torres, who was 22 at the time, was killed on September 5th as he rode the Big Thunder Mountain Railroad coaster. Authorities said the lead car, which looked like a locomotive but has no engine, lost the assembly that carries the, the rear wheels, causing the car to strike a tunnel roof. The first passenger car then ran under the airborne locomotive, killing Torres. His death was the 10th since the park opened in 1955 and was the first fatality at the Anaheim par theme park since 1998. Thomas Cleveland. Now, Thomas Cleveland was a 19-year-old California resident who was killed when he attempted to sneak into Disneyland along the monorail track. He climbed onto the monorail beamway Friday night before Disney guards spotted him. They shouted a warning to the youth, but instead of jumping down, he fell to a canopy beneath the track and the bottom portion of the four-car train struck and killed him. You can't die at Disneyland. Now, this is actually a rumor in which Disney has purposefully stalled people from dying on the property so they can claim that no one has actually quote-unquote died. However, as we saw with the past three things, this is actually disproven because... Disney has actually kept account of people who've actually died on their property. Mickey Mouse gas masks. Now, back in World War II, these gas masks were designed to help calm down terrified children of the war. However, to be honest, these masks look terrifying and I feel like they would scare children instead of like calming them down. Mickey Mouse in Vietnam, otherwise known as short subject. This was basically a once thought to be lost short that took place around the 60s in an effort to hopefully decrease the need or want for the Vietnam War. The one minute clip was uploaded onto YouTube in 2013 and can be found if you want to watch it. Bomber art. Now back in World War II, Disney artists created different art that was used in military items such as planes, bombs, and other stuff like that. Matterhorn bobsleds unsafe. Now, the ride opened on June 14, 1959 at Disneyland in Anaheim, California, and has gone through several renovations as time has went on. Currently, only two deaths have happened on the ride, one in 1964 and one in 1984. Black Friday. Now, I think this is in reference to Black Friday in which everybody goes and buys stuff for a low price. So, according to this, Disney World does not have Black Friday discounts, but there are Disney World discounts this time of year that are perfect for your vacation. Deborah Stone. Now, Deborah, or Debbie as she went by, was a hostess at the America Sings attraction, in which this particular attraction had a spinning mechanism in which the stage would rotate to another stage. On the evening of July 8th, 1974, Debbie was working her usual shift at the attraction. She got too close to the mechanism that made the stages turn and she was crushed between the two stages. Supposedly now, the ride has since changed its name, but the rotating stage has stayed as a concept. And supposedly also, according to cast members and guests at the park, they have heard the voice of Debbie's ghost saying, be careful. Epcot suicide. On the 12th of September, 1992, a man shot and killed himself at Epcot. Alan Ferris entered the park about 90 minutes after operating hours in search of his ex-girlfriend. Orange County deputy sheriffs reported Ferris's demands to see the woman, and when security guards refused, he pulled out a sawed-off 12-gauge shotgun. Fer Ferris fired three shots and the three guards fled. One guard escaped, but two stopped after Ferris shot them again. Ferris took the guards hostage in the Journey into Imagination pavilion, for approximately 10 minutes. He eventually released a hostage and walked out with the gun pointed at himself. Moments later, he shot himself in the head. Ferris was pronounced dead at the Orlando Regional Medical Center. June 29th hostage crisis. Now a marital dispute between two people led into a hostage crisis situation in which 300 people were evacuated from Disney. Bismarck Rodriguez was charged with taking his four-year-old son and a room service worker hostage at a Walt Disney World hotel on June 29, 2000. Court records in Florida and California show Rodriguez, who was 39 at the time, had been accused of beating his 32-year-old wife at least three times in the past and threatening family members. Once, according to his wife, he held a gun to her head. In this light, the hostage crisis that forced the evacuation of nearly 300 people 
from Disney's Boardwalk Inn on June 29th appears to be just the latest blow-up in a history of volcanic rage stemming from his obsessions with his wife and family. Sexual Assault Allegations In December 2017, Disney executive John Healy was charged with three counts of sexual abuse. The abuse reportedly occurred about 10 years ago and two girls were affected. One woman came forward claiming she was sexually abused when she was 15 years old. Animal Abuse Allegations According to state and federal charges filed in September of 1989, Disney workers beat vultures to death, held dozens of vultures in a small overheated shed with little food and water, shot hawks and falcons, and knocked eggs from the nest of egrets and ibises. Disney was trying to control wild birds, particularly vultures, on Discovery Island, its 11-acre zoological park. The, par the birds were attacking animals, stealing their food, defecating on boardwalks, and making too much noise. Disney was given 16 animal cruelty charges, and its attraction, Discovery Island, was going to pay $95,000 to avoid going to court. The Black Cauldron Uncut Now, The Black Cauldron was a movie in 1985 that Disney produced. However, there was a lot of shots of graphic violence as one of the characters, Taran, fights his way out of the castle. The most well-known deleted scene due to a clumsy jump that left it in the film's soundtrack and a cell of the infamous scene appearing online is that of a man being mauled by one of the cauldron born. Appalled by the film's darkness and graphic nature and also concerned with its long length, Jeffrey Katzenberg requested that the film's release be delayed from its scheduled Christmas 1984 release to July 1985 so that the whole film could be reworked. The Black Cauldron was ultimately cut by 12 to 15 minutes, all of which were fully animated and scored. The Handy Manny Hijack Now, an incident happened in which an adult film inadvertently aired during a Disney Channel Kids show, Handy Manny, on a Comcast system in New Jersey on Tuesday, May 1, 2007. Comcast has taken responsibility for the incident. According to Comcast spokesman Fred DeAndra, the issue was a signal bleed from an adult content that Comcast carries. It happened about 9.30 Tuesday morning. Nineteen ninety-nine Hanging Now, one day in 1999, in the It's a Small World ride at Disney, it was evacuated. All the lights shut off and it was dark. Over the intercom, someone gave a brief explanation to what is going on. All the person said was, Please face straight ahead and please leave the building. We hope you enjoyed your stay at Disney. The person telling the story later said that his mother was snapping photos to fill up the rest of the blank space in the camera. One of the photos was aimed at the roof. It seemed to be a small child hanging by the neck very high above the ground. Who or what of the photo is still unknown? I tried to email Disney about it, but they ignored me. I tried to go to the park to ask them about it, but as soon as I mentioned it, I got kicked out. I will post a photo along with this. It is very disturbing. Subliminal messages. Now we had talked about some of these earlier in this video and the wonderful world of Disney has long been suspected of hiding subliminal sexual messages in its animated films. For another example of this could be Simba's nose in The Lion King and Aladdin in this scene I'm showing you right now in which you turn your volume up and you supposedly can hear a subliminal message. Bo Dewey. Come on, come on. Come on, good can you just take off <laughs> Abandoned by God. Now this is a creepy pasta referencing Treasure Island, which is actually Discovery Island. This is another name for Discovery Island. So the creepy pasta was written by Christopher Howard Wolf, and it makes you question to yourself. Is the creepypasta actually real because of how many similarities there are to the actual Discovery Island and what happened? So when searching up Treasure Island, Discovery Island came up. So it could be a reference to that, like I had said previously. So I'm going to give you a little verbatim of how the story went, but also giving you main points to the story and background themes of it. So according to the story, Disney once attempted to open a resort in Esmeralda Isle, North Carolina called Mo Mowgli's Place. It allegedly drew inspiration from the Jungle Book. As quote-unquote abandoned by Disney would have it, though the project was fraught from the start with locals disapproving of everything from the resort's theme to the fact that a major corporation now owns so much of Esmeralda Isle's land. Despite the outcry, however, the resort was built anyway and it even got as far as opening up for business. 
But then it all just stopped. So our supposed hero in this story manages to hunt down exactly where the remains of the decaying resort are. So off he goes, camera in hand, to document what's left. He finds that in the years since Mowgli's palace closure, tropical plants have begun to overrun the native flora and fauna. Graffiti has sprung up everywhere. The place has been ransacked for anything valuable, and even the animal animals have been simply existing in the wild. Scrawled over the gates and in a few other locations, of course, are hand-printed words stating exactly what has happened. Mowgli's place has been, quote-unquote, abandoned by Disney. As the creepypasta continues, more events happen that start to prove that the story is purely fictional. So our main character finds a door that is titled Character Prep 1, and supposedly what is there is the decaying character costumes, and supposedly it is unknown what is inside them. These character suits could possibly be zombies or any type of supernatural verity, but whatever they are, they are definitely not part of our world. You can rest easy, however, because just like every creepypasta story, it isn't true. Disney has never even had plans to open up a Jungle Book-themed resort in North Carolina, let alone gone as far as finishing construction on one and opening shop. Walt is frozen. Rumor has it that the animation legend was frozen after death so he can be reanimated in the future. On December 15, 1966, animation legend Walt Disney died from complications of lung cancer for which he had undergone surgery just over a month earlier. Now this theory is plausible because freezing people became a thing in the 60s in which also Walt Disney passed away in the 60s so it is somewhat plausible. And the theory goes that he is buried underneath Disney or somewhere in Disney and he's frozen. Suicidemouse.avi Suicidemouse.avi is a lost episode creepypasta and is widely seen as the forefather of the entire lost episode genre. This story is based off an old unseen Mickey Mouse episode and there is also a video that is based off of the creepypasta. However, the video has varied in different forms and none is certain to be the original video of the creepypasta. So this is how the creepypasta goes. According to sources, it's nothing special. It's just a continuous loop like the Flintstones of Mickey walking past six buildings that goes on for two or three minutes before fading out. Unlike the cutesy tunes put through, the song on this cartoon was not a song at all, it's just constant banging on a piano for a minute and a half before going to the white noise for the remainder of the film. Mickey wasn't dancing, not even smiling, just kind of walking as if you or I were walking, with a normal facial expression, but for some reason, his head tilted to the side as he kept a dismal look. Up until a year or two ago, everyone believed that after it cut to black, that was it. However, the cartoon was actually 9 minutes and 4 seconds long. On the 7th minute, the murmur turned into a blood-curling scream, and the picture was getting more obscure. Now, supposedly, this was shown to Disney animators in the 30s, 40s, or 50s, and it ended with one of the animators coming out of the room, holding a gun to his head, and saying, Real suffering is not known before killing himself. Room Zero. Now, this is another creepypasta in which... During the Cold War scare of the 60s, when Disney World was constructed, Room Zero was stocked with similar masks such as the Mickey Mouse ones that were made for World War II. Room Zero refers to an underground bomb shelter located in Disney World. An unnamed incident which occurred at this shelter during an air attack led to a new form of Corruptus and the gas gods. Only the protagonist and Hammer know about it. Ida witnessed the incident taking place in Room Zero while she was still alive. These are all people from the creepypasta. Now, supposedly this creepypasta and the abandoned by Disney creepypasta are somewhat similarly connected. Freemasonry, Club 33, and Illuminati. Now, I'm putting all three of these together because they all center around Walt Disney himself. Club 33 is a private dining club located within the Disneyland Park. Opened in 1967 by Walt Disney, the club was modeled after numerous executive lounges created by pavilion sponsors in the 1960 World's Fair. Now, supposedly, Disney himself was part of this club along with some high-ranking celebrities. There are only two ways to get into Club 33, being an exclusive member or being invited by one. 
Membership can cost up to $100,000 annually, with a reported $12,500 to $30,000 in additional annual fees. Now, supposedly also, Walt Disney was a 33rd degree Freemason, in which the numbers 33, 22, and 11 all have Illuminati ties. All three of those numbers are power numbers and have significance. So under Illuminati terms, the number 11 represents vision, 22 represents vision with action, and 33 represents guidance to the world. All three of those numbers represent the triangle of illumination, meaning Illuminati. So my final thoughts on this video is just, wow, this came out really well as my second video in this iceberg series and i did listen to what a lot of you guys had told me in my attack on titan iceberg and i tried to fix certain stuff in this video so i do hope it came out better in its audio or its quality or whatever i really do hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did make sure to like subscribe and share comment down below what else you guys want me to talk about on this channel i am planning to do more iceberg videos i want to get started on a death note iceberg hopefully in the next coming weeks um, and with that out of the way, I want to thank you guys again for watching this video. Thank you guys again for the love on my Attack on Titan video. And I do want to apologize that this video took me a long time to do. I'm sorry about that. However, I do hope it was much better in its audio or quality. And with that out of the way, thank you guys again for watching this video. And I'll see you guys next time on my channel. Bye guys!